In our previous video on the Napoleonic Wars, we described the beginning of the War of the Fourth Coalition, and the twin battles of Jena and Orsted that concluded the first phase of the conflict. But the war was just starting, and soon Napoleon was tested by the new Russian army and a harsh winter. Welcome to our documentary on the Battle of Eylau. The War of the Fourth Coalition erupted in October of 1806, and in less than a month, French Emperor Napoleon had utterly defeated the Prussian army at the battles of Jena and Oersted and occupied Berlin. The Prussians could not oppose the Grand Army, but despite that, King Frederick William III refused to negotiate and fled to Königsberg in eastern Prussia, as he was assured that Russian armies would soon support him. Indeed, 68,000 Russians under Benigsen were in Grodno, and a 40,000 strong force commanded by Buxhoveden was on its way. Napoleon knew that he had to decisively defeat the Russians to win the war, but his supply lines were still not secure enough as some of the Prussian strongholds continued their resistance. So, in early November, he sent the Corps of Marshal Davout across the Oder River to prevent the Russians from setting their defensive line there. Fortunately for the French, the main Prussian bastion of Magdeburg fell on November 8th, and on the next day, Davout entered Poznan, which triggered a patriotic Polish uprising. The Poles started fighting against the remainder of the Prussian forces in the area. At the same time, the fall of Magdeburg allowed Napoleon to move more corps across the Oder, and that forced Benigsen to stop and wait for his reinforcements. A lack of supplies was preventing Napoleon from marching at his usual fast pace, so he entered Warsaw only on the 19th of December. Still, he attempted a pincer move by moving some of his forces to the north. The Russian troops were spread 60 kilometers to the north of Warsaw, between Poltusk and Galimin. On the 26th of December, the French attacked from the northwest and south, but failed to encircle the Russian troops. Benigsen managed an orderly retreat to Bialystok, where he decided to winter. Although Napoleon hoped to chase the enemy, the winter was too harsh, and he also had to send his corps back to their winter cantonments. Both armies had a hard time procuring rations. By the middle of January, the situation became critical, and Benigsen started moving towards Danzig. It was still controlled by the Prussians and had ample supplies. Coincidentally, Marshal Ney attempted a raid towards Heilsberg on the 17th of January. Napoleon was furious and ordered Ney to return. The latter complied. At the same time, the Russians reached the position of Bernadotte and threatened to cut him off from the majority of French troops. The French Marshal was too quick for them and retreated to the south. The Russians caught up at Murungan, but Bernadotte scored a minor victory and successfully withdrew. All that gave Napoleon a brilliant idea. He ordered Bernadotte and Ney to continue their withdrawal, while Agirot, Soul and Davou were commanded to march north. The goal was to cut the Russian retreat and impose a general battle. Unfortunately for Napoleon, constant rains made the road impassable, and on the 31st of January, his messenger to Bernadotte was caught by Russian Cossacks, which allowed Benigsen to learn of the Emperor's plans and retreat. French troops almost caught up to the Russians on two occasions in early February, but Benigsen was able to escape. However, further retreat was impossible, as that would have let the French capture crucial Königsberg. Benigsen stopped at the small town of Prusitjelau, modern-day Bagrationovsk, in Russia. He asked for assistance from the 12,000-strong Prussian corps under Lestok that was nearby. Napoleon knew of the Prussian forces in the area and ordered Ney to prevent them from joining Benigsen, but the Prussians managed to avoid the French Marshal. The Battle of Eylau took place on the 7th and 8th of February, 1807. At the beginning of the battle, the Russians had about 66,000 troops against 45,000 with Napoleon, but the Emperor knew that Ney and Davout, each with 15,000 soldiers, were within marching distance. The Russians had a decided advantage in artillery, with 450 guns against Napoleon's 200. Benigsen needed time to set up his troops to the northeast of Eylau, so he left his rearguard under the command of Bagration to cover the deployment. 
The Russian general was able to repulse the French initially, but by midday, Augereau and the Imperial Guards joined the battle and Bagration had to retreat under overwhelming French pressure. Bagration retreated towards the main army, while General Barclay screened his withdrawal in the town of Eylau. The layout of the town wasn't conductive to an attack, and Barclay managed to defend his positions well into the evening. By 2200 hours, he was ordered to move back and join Benigsen. The Russian commander knew that not all of the French troops were present, and ordered part of his right flank to strengthen the reserves, which weakened his wing. The morning started with an artillery duel. As the French were expecting the arrival of Davout's corps from the southwest, Soule was ordered to attack the Russian right and create a diversion. However, the Russians stopped Soule and when the vanguard of Davout's forces arrived, they were intercepted by the cavalry reserve. Napoleon needed to win time to let the remainder of Davout's soldiers join the battle, so he ordered his centre and right to attack. A blizzard started and blinded the centre of the French army led by Augereau. Visibility was so limited that the French artillery mistakenly bombarded Augereau, who walked right into the Russian artillery battery. More than 5,000 French died in the center without reaching the Russian lines, while the French right didn't do much damage to the Russian left. Benigsen counterattacked against the French right, led by Song Hilaire, with his cavalry and forced it to stop its advance, while his infantry moved against the French center, which was defended by what was left of Augereau's corps. However, Napoleon still had his guard to send in. While the infantry units joined the center and stopped the enemy advance, the cavalry portion of the guard attacked the Russians from the rear, and the majority of this column was destroyed. The French also had Moraz cavalry in reserve, and it was ordered to counterattack. The right wing of these units attacked the Russian cavalry fighting Song Hilaire's right flank and scattered them. Murat and Song Hilaire continued their movement, and although the infantry were stopped, their cavalry charge dispersed every Russian unit in front of it and reached the reserves. At this point in the battle, Davout's remaining troops arrived and attacked the Russian left. And while Su, Augereau, Murat and the guard held their positions, Davout, supported by Song Hilaire, pushed the Russians back and by 1530, the Russian left and left center were almost at a 90 degree angle to the rest of the forces. Luckily for Benigsen, 9,000 Prussians commanded by Lestock entered the battle and joined the beleaguered Russian left. The Prussians attacked Davout from the right and slowly pushed him away. By 1900 hours, Davout had to retreat and set a line between the villages of Kutschitten and Anklappen. Around that time, Ney's corps, which was supposed to stop Lestock, entered the fray. His forces moved against the extreme right of the Russian troops, but Benigsen used the remainder of his cavalry to intercept them. The battle continued until 2200 hours, at which point the sides disengaged. Both armies lost at least 15,000 troops, and it is possible that Napoleon's army suffered more casualties. Despite that, at 2300, Benigsen ordered a retreat. The French were in no shape to chase the enemy. And although the battlefield belonged to Napoleon, it was clear that for the first time in his career, he had failed to win a decisive battle. Eylau indicated that the War of the Fourth Coalition was far from over. Thanks for watching our documentary on the Battle of Eylau. In two weeks, Napoleon will be back to command his troops at the Battle of Friedland. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters who make the creation of these videos possible. Patreon is the best way to suggest a new video, learn about our schedule and so much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.